Spring Thunder is brought to you by the National Wild Turkey Federation, Woodhaven Custom Calls, Federal Premium Ammunition, Muddy Outdoors, ScoutHookWeather.com, and Cabela's. Welcome to Cabela Spring Thunder. This week we've got a busy episode for you. We're going to take you on several updates from across the country. And we're also going to give you a lot of scouting tips and techniques for those of you that either have seasons coming in or it's warming up in your area and you got birds starting to become more and more active. You need to get out to these properties, start scouting them, and learn how to put together a game plan for opening day. <laughs> been hearing some toms lose their mind on the roost all week long. Uh, hopefully if we can get in there this morning and the turkeys are, are roosted where they have been all week, we should have a pretty good crack at one. South Carolina for saving us from gas money and we can put more into the upstate economy now. They're really vocal this morning. Not so much right off the limb but after fly down. Uh, what's interesting to us is it, it's, it's, it's on. It, they're starting to dance. Last week uh, we were riding around. We saw flocks of hens and toms they were separated. The toms were hanging together, hens were hanging together, but it's official this morning, March the 8th. The toms are getting fired up. They were roosted all uh, down here together, so we've heard at least uh, three or four different birds here this morning. And they're, they're talking pretty good. Lord willing, they'll be talking even better this Saturday, March the 12th. South Carolina Youth Day in the Upstate. Well, in the whole state. We're thankful to South Carolina for this new South Carolina turkey season dates that have been in effect starting today, March 12th, got us in the woods earlier than we ever have been in South Carolina and it definitely was a success. Uh, getting out there this early, especially on a warm spring already, uh, you know, it feels like mid-April, close to May right now. Temperatures this morning were in the 60s uh, and rose up in the mid-70s uh, to currently right now. So. Uh, we got a youth out in the woods who's never uh, harvested a turkey. He got some heart pounding action. Uh, we got to knock the dust off of our vest and make, get all the cameras checked and get all of our calls tuned up and ready for next week's opener. And uh, we got some good fun and fellowship. So we had some hot birds we think may have been two year olds that were talking very lively. And uh, if we just had the right setup, we'd have had a young man with his first bird 
those birds had a place in mind to go and uh, they were talking pretty good for the first hour. But they got, must have found them a, a, a hiding honey hole with some girlfriends because they got quiet after about eight o'clock. So uh, it was a good successful youth day. Things are seeming to be a little bit early here in South Carolina. These birds are talking pretty good. We ran into an older bird with some hens and uh, we never heard a peep out of him. So just keep that in mind when you're heading to the woods here in the next few weeks. South Carolina's coming in next Sunday. Good luck. You know, when you're off and running and gunning, instead of just blasting out some cutting and yelping, try building the sequence into the excited cutting and yelping. When I say build the sequence, start with a slower cut six series and then build into an excited cut series and then finish it off with four or five uh, fast yelps. And it's not a long series. This is only like 10, 15 seconds, but just have that little bit of building. And what I think happens is when you catch, you hit those first couple of cut notes, you grab his attention, then you get a little more excited and he's listening harder. And then you fire off with a couple of quick cuts and then a yelp and then he gobbles. So let me demonstrate it on the Vision Crystal. just like so. So try that when you're building, you're cutting, you're running and gunning sequences instead of just hitting real hard cutting and then the little fast yelp. Build into that sequence, you'll often get him to gobble. All right, we're about two weeks out from the juvenile opener here in Tennessee. And David and I came out to the farm today that we did the burn on a couple weeks ago just to see if any of the birds were uh, roosted down around the edges of it. What we were seeing uh, last weekend when we were out driving around that the toms are starting to mix into the hen groups. You've got, you know, 20, 30 hens and five or six toms. And the closer we get to season, they'll start busting up and splitting off and, and getting into their smaller groups. And that's generally when we start seeing and hearing more birds out in this area. Uh, right now, it seems that they're still uh, in their winter time areas. The majority here in Tennessee are, and uh, which holds true for here this morning. Uh, the birds that we have heard are still up on the ridges back deep in the woods. We have one food plot that's up on top of a hill here that's uh, pretty good ways up in the woods and that sounds like where the birds are right now. So they still will come down to these fields, um, but usually later on up in the morning after it warms up a little bit and they really get up and start moving before we start seeing them down here in this area. But uh, so that's pretty much our report for here right now. You know, uh, birds are still flocked up in their big flocks. The toms are mixing in with the hens. They're usually gob gobbling real good in the mornings. But, uh, you know, a couple weeks out from season, it's, that's what you want to see because you don't want it to get started too soon. You don't want those hens all to get bred uh, before season starts because it really slows down your movement and your gobbling acti activity toward the middle of your season. So we're looking forward to getting started here in Tennessee and uh, going to ease over here to the other side of the farm right now and see if we can see any birds uh, where we did another burn at a couple weeks ago and uh, hopefully see some. Here comes the other one. Six. Well, it's kind of just like we were thinking and talking about over on the other side. On our way over, we spotted a group, of about 30 hens that had five big strutters with them. And then we get over here on the other side of the farm, and there's six strutters with another group of about 20 to 30 hens. And like we were just talking about, you know, they're still in their winter groups. I mean, that's a prime example. Two flocks right here on this farm. And uh, both of them have multiple gobblers with multiple hens. So that's a good sign that they're not busting up yet, that they're not really getting into their springtime rituals, and uh, that they're still going to be pretty patternable, hopefully here in a couple weeks when juvenile opens up. But uh, it's really good to get out here and see all your hard work starting to pay off. You know, we come out here, we do burns on these farms. We, we do uh, clover food plots, wheat food plots all winter long to hold these birds and to see you know, these big flocks of birds like this on one farm, I mean, you've got probably 35 to 40 birds here and you've got another 35 to 40 birds here within a few hundred yards of each other. And uh, it's really nice to be able to come out and see that on a place you put a lot of hard work and money into. A lot of scratchings, for sure. Well, we just walked up out of that real thick bottom over there that John just panned from, and we got up in here along the edge of this slope where some of this early spring green regrowth is starting to occur and there's lots of scratchings right in here. There's some very fresh scratchings that look like they've been done just in the last couple of days. And then there's some older scratchings that are, that are probably a week or so old. You can tell because 
the the moisture is much darker in this dirt that they've just started scratching these past few days. We're starting to put together a good little pattern on these turkeys. They're roosting up in here along the edge of these two ridges. Then it looks like they're uh, they're pecking around up there, feeding a lot on acorns. And then as the day progresses on, they're coming down in here and feeding on some of this new spring uh, spring growth that is that is just now starting to come up. And this is going to be a great spot throughout the spring to kill a gobbler because hens are going to want to nest down in that thick stuff like I said and then this buffer strip along the edge of this ridge that's more open those gobblers are going to be trekking right down through here searching for those nesting hens so all things to keep in mind whenever you're uh, you're trying to look for for uh, turkey sign in the woods and we'll make you a better hunter this spring all right so what I've been doing here I'm, I'm walking this logging road we found, we found a field a little while ago and it was a logging road heading into the field. So what I'm doing, I'm taking my GPS. I marked that field on my GPS. Now what we're doing is these handheld GPS has a, has a tracking mode where as you walk with the unit is on, it will draw a line of, of where you've been. And what I'm trying to do is, is get a, a visual of this area that I'm not very familiar with, but it will draw a line of that road. And I can always refer back to it. I can refer back to where the field is. And as I'm walking this road here, I'm noticing this beautiful bottom that's off to the side. And I can just visual in my mind, visualize these gobblers walking up and down this logging road right here, strutting, uh, gobbling, probably gobbling down off into this bottom, looking for uh, potential hens uh, to get up with. But I'm telling you, these GPSs are gold on these wildlife management areas, hunting new properties that you've never been on before. Mark your fields, mark your water sources. Anytime you find scratchings, roosting areas, anything and everything that you can possibly mark will help you to get back to them and will help you to become more familiar with the property that you're hunting. I'm gonna keep walking this logging road and uh, I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. I hope uh, a lot of those scouting tips and techniques will help you all whenever it comes time to get in the field in your area. I'm here in Missouri right now and the woods are greening up, the birds are chirping, turkeys are gobbling in the mornings, and we're still a month away from our youth season. So it's definitely going to be an early spring for us in this part of the country and we're going to have to rely a lot on our scouting prior to opening day. But we're getting ready to head south here in a few days. Myself, Andy, and David are gonna go down to Alabama, see if we can get on a few longbeards down there. Their season's gonna be opening up this week, and I can't wait to get on some goblin turkeys. But that's gonna wrap it up for our show. If you're not already a member of the NWTF, please click on the link in the corner of our screen, go over to their page and become one. But thanks for joining us. We'll see you next Monday, right back here for the next episode of Cabela's Spring Thunder.